I previously made a video on how to set up a very simple waypoint marker system within Unreal for VR. However, there are some limitations in how that system functions since it was just a stationary actor that stayed within a single position, making it really only something that was really good for small environments. So in this video, I wanted to further expand upon that so that way we can use this in more environments and it's something that's more realistic to use in a wider variety of VR games. Before we go ahead and jump into that, if you enjoy this video and you want to see even more just like that, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. It lets me know that you guys enjoy this video and want to see more just like this one. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. First thing we're going to want to look at is, I, I first want to cover what the main limitation that I have found in using this waypoint system. <clears throat> now it's not terrible. I know it certainly got to use for many people. But the main issue that I see with this kind of waypoint system is that it's a, it's stationary, right? So you can see it through the walls and using the material that we did in the last video. Um, so you can place it anywhere. The issue though is that if you start, you know, going out further and further and further, then you kind of run into this issue where it becomes really small and maybe a little bit more difficult to see. Now, these are actually particularly large waypoints as well, which means that we'll be able to see them for quite some distance, but they're not quite, they're, they're still the issue that once we come up close, they're so big that maybe they start obstructing other things. Um, maybe they, they cut into whatever you're aiming to um, target. So it can become quite an issue. So the, quite, the simple solution that we'll be doing is that we'll be repositioning around the player's head so that way it always stays at a constant scale and it's always facing in the location that we want it to be at. So in order to do this, what we're going to want to do is I'm going to go ahead and pop open this waypoint marker that we have here. So let me go and open this. And we're essentially just going to be modifying some of what we have here. So before we do any of this, we need some kind of target location that we want to put the waypoint at, that we want the, to guide the player to. Um, and this can be either a location, it can be an actor, it can be a transform that you get the location from. There's a lot of different ways you can go about doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a simple actor and we'll just call it target actor. Let's go and rename this to, or let's go and make this a variable type of actor as well. And this, and this actor will allow for us to get a object that we're looking to guide the player to. So uh, for, in order for this to work, let's go ahead and take, for example, one of these cubes. What we'll do is we'll reposition it, say over here in the corner. Let's go and just move it right over here. There we go. We'll go and reposition it right over here in this corner. And we can use this as our target actor that we want to guide the player to. This is also quite nice too, because it also means that if we decide to move the actor around later on, we'll also still be able to reposition the waypoint to wherever this new actor is, rather than having something stationary. So in order for this to work, let's go ahead. Uh, the other thing I almost forgot is we also need to make this public as well. This will allow for us to edit this variable while we're in the scene, which we're going to need to do in order to set that cube. So let's go ahead and drop this down a little bit. Um, actually, no, we'll leave it up. So what I want to do is I want to create a sequence here. Let's go ahead there. And in case you've never used a sequence or anything, it's quite simple to be honest. Uh, all that sequence does is it will run the first execution node and then followed up by the second execution node. Uh, so it's quite an easy way to kind of separate off code that way. So what we're going to do is first we're going to want to make sure our target is valid. Okay, that's gonna be the first thing. This will also be nice too, because it also means that we can still use it in the original way that we had it. And then if we have a target actor, then all we have to do is attach that and it'll automatically reposition it to wherever we want the player to be. So let's go ahead and leave that there. And next thing we're gonna wanna do is, I'm actually gonna copy right here. So this is our get player pawn, get player pawn. And then we also want to get a component from this player pawn, get component by class, there we go. And the component we wanna look for is a camera component. Now, I went over this briefly in the last tutorial, but in case you don't know why I'm doing this, the essential reason why I'm doing this is, is that supposedly any pawn will have some kind of camera component that 
they have to use in order to see. And by grabbing the camera component itself instead of the player, we can be sure that it's going to be focused based off of wherever the player is looking and not based off of the actor or anything like that. So this will just uh, make things a little bit easier. It'll make sure that we do in fact have the right position. The other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get our target location actor. So we'll go and do that. And then we're going to want to do a find look at rotation. There we go. So our look at rotation is going to be the world location of our camera component. Get world location. There we go. And we'll go ahead and set that as the start location. And our target actor is going to be our target location. So we'll do get world, let's do get actor location. There we go. Get actor location. All right. And then what we want to do is we want to grab our camera component and we will take this out, get, let me see, get forward vector from this uh, look at rotation. This will convert to a vector, which we need in order to reposition it away from the player. And then we will do a plus. Okay, and this is going to be added by our forward vector that we have here. So we're actually gonna do a multiply and it actually defaults to a vector times a vector, but we don't want to multiply it by a vector. We want to multiply it by a float. And we'll say, let's say like 50. I think 50 would be pretty good. So what this is doing here is we are basically just taking our rotation, which we're getting, which will give us where it is that um, that our actor is, our target actor is relevant to where our um, our camera is, which will be wherever our head is. And then what we're doing is we're using this to find the location that we want to place our waypoint actor at now. So now that we have that, we can quite simply just set actor location. There we go. It's going to be there. And we'll do, we'll do, uh, no, teleport. Do teleport. Go and drag this down. And that should be all of that. Uh, so in case you ever want to modify this any further or anything like that, you actually can like go into here. You can change this value. This will determine how far away the actor is. Um, I'm actually going to decrease the scale of the waypoint actor as well. So I'm not going to worry too much about this. Otherwise I probably would be since that will uh, kind of influence how big it looks and where the player is. Um, so yeah, so that should be our relocation of the waypoint actor. Um, the last thing I do want to check real quick while we're here is we do want to make sure that we have no collisions. So you can actually see we currently have block all dynamic. Um, so I'm actually going to want to change this to no collision. There we go. And that should be all good. So we'll go and jump right over here. And we want to grab one of our waypoint actors. And if we actually go and open the details panel, you can actually see we now have the target actor is uh, is a variable we can now edit in here. And we want to grab this cube here. So let's see, what's the name of this cube? Grab actor stack mesh physics ten. Okay, quite a uh, quite a busy name there. <laughs> uh, so t -t 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 this one. All right. So that should allow for it to target our cube that we have here. The only other thing I want to do here is I do also want to scale this down a bit. We'll do, let's see here, do like 0.25 I think would be pretty good. This is honestly more going to be relevant to whatever your waypoint looks like as well as how, as well as how obtrusive you want it to be um, if, you know, things like that. So th this is going to be something that's pretty good for where, um, where I think will work for me. So we'll go and leave that there. And I do still want to leave the same material. And the reason I want to leave that same material is because if it happens to go on the other side of a wall or something like that, we still want to be able to see that and we don't want it to go invisible because that can, of course, be a little bit annoying not being able to see where you can go. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get this boot up in VR and we will have a look at how this works. All right, so uh, we're now here. You can actually see that we have our sphere right here, uh, the waypoint sphere here. 
Um, I also intentionally left that one over so you can see it still functions as it did before as well, so long as you don't set a target actor. So let's go ahead. Um, oh, I always forget that they change this. There we go. So you can actually see as I move around, our cube is roughly over there. Um, unfortunately, this is a bit too big to be able to easily see the cube. Come on. My controllers are messing up on me. But you can see as I move around, it still stays pointing uh, roughly in the correct location. I can actually go right up to this. Come on. My controllers are being a little bit finicky today. There it is. So, oh, let me see if I can grab this real quick. So you can actually see too, I'm moving around the cube and you can actually see it based off the shell and if I bring it close enough to my face, you can see it. But you can actually see as I move it around too, the waypoint continues to move around with our cube, which is also really nice given that that one doesn't actually have any sort of repositioning on actors or anything like that. But I think this is a very useful little uh, thing to be able to add into any VR game. So yeah, and let me go and throw this. Oh, that was the wrong way. I think I threw it right there on the ground. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there you go. And with that, that is a very simple modification that we can do to the waypoint in order to make it more of a constant scale based off of how far away the player is. It's also really nice because it allows for us to reposition based off of an object rather than keeping it at a constant location. So I think it's something that's very useful and is certainly something that can definitely be used in a lot of VR games and other sorts of projects like that as well. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see even more just like that, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, I will see you in the next reality. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters, Boombox Ed, 9X, and Shea.